Welcome friends to another episode of Blossomed and Bourbon. My name is Mark. I'm the owner here at Creative Occasions and I am happy to welcome you to my workroom. Um, today we're going to talk about frogs and you're thinking frogs. Yeah, frogs and flowers. Uh, frogs is a term that's used for a mechanical device. And so this mechanical device was really, it has its kind of foundation in Asian Ikebana influenced design. And uh, if you're familiar with the term Kenzan, which is in the Ikebana world, a um, mechanic that's used to hold flowers, that's where these pin frogs originally came from. Why they're called frogs, I have no idea. If you know that, I want to hear from you. Please share that with me. Um, even in Google search, I couldn't find anything that really related to why they're called frogs. Anyway, it's a device that's used to help you hold flowers in place. Now, uh, because they kind of started becoming popular in the 30s, you can find these at thrift stores, you can find these at auctions, online places, um, you know, perhaps in your friend's basement. Um, and they come in different shapes and styles. So this, for instance, is a glass one. And as you can see, it has holes in it. The holes are where you place the flowers. Uh, these metal ones are typically like a um, cast iron or a weighted kind of metal. The pins obviously being sharp to hold the flowers. The weight is to kind of keep them balanced. They come obviously in different sizes. Um, obviously you can get one flower with that, but kind of cool um, way to, to do, go about mechanics. This little container is also a weighted container that came with one of the frogs that I bought. Um, I do have a tiny little collection of these because I do love them. I think they're just fascinating. This also is a flower frog. Obviously holes going in um, place for the flowers. And you can even find some ceramic ones that people have made like this one. So we're gonna do a design that's very much um, kind of Asian influenced. Uh, it's more of the Morabana school, uh, a very open, not a lot of flower style. And we're gonna use the frogs. Uh, I'm gonna use this frog for the flowers, but what I'm gonna do is take this one and place it upside down on top of that one as kind of a counterweight so that I'll be sure and have a nice sturdy place for the flowers. So obviously water is important and you wanna make sure that you get the water up over the level of the pins so that the flower um, is drinking when it's in the arrangement. And for this arrangement, I love iris. I just love iris. I'm so happy when spring comes and we get beautiful iris again. Um, and in Morabana, there are three different levels in the arrangement. There's heaven, man, and earth. So I think for this arrangement, I'm gonna use the same flower for all three. That may not be correct, I'm not sure. Uh, but I do just love the iris for that. And basically, you just are going to smush the flower down onto the pins. It's a very, very simple technique. It gives you a beautiful outcome. Um, the arrangements are just lovely. And so the concept between or behind heaven, man, and earth is the different levels. So this is gonna represent heaven. This is gonna represent man. And then we're gonna choose this one to represent earth. Now, let me maybe show you with this one. If your iris is not quite as open as you'd like for it to be, this is kind of a sidebar, you just take your middle finger and flick it a little bit because this one was open quite a bit, but not quite as far as the others. And so then you can manipulate it a little bit and get that to be a bit more open. So it's more representative of the other types of blooms that we have. All right, so this one, we're gonna do a shorter cut right down on those pins and that represents earth. Now, um, with other elements of this, you can add in, we could add in this foliage, for example, that would be beautiful. Just do a little bit of that. We don't wanna get too crazy with this. And then I think I might like a little bit of curly willow in it too. Cause you know me and sticks. Kind of feel like it's not an arrangement unless we have a stick in it, right? Now, I obviously have not looked at these in advance, but that's kind of cool. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. Uh, 
Yeah, could you hear that pop down on that pin? It's gonna be nice, nice and secure. Now, another thing that you can do, if it frets you that you can see the pin frog down in the arrangement, obviously you can see from this angle that they're quite visible. You can actually take something like rocks and we can just dump the rocks over top of that. If you're using a container that's dark colored, like even black inside, then you would never see those pin frogs. And given that there's a little bit of black in those rocks, I think that's a pretty nice disguise. There's a little bit over on this side we can see, so let's add some more there. Oh, some foreign object in the bag. All right. So we can kind of pile that up. And there we've nicely disguised, I think, the fact that those pin cushion or the, the pin frogs are down in there. And you know, that's going to bother me because I'm still seeing part of that. All right. So there's number one. And honestly, we've talked about, um, Jason and I were talking about the fact that maybe we could rate the arrangement so that you would know what you're getting into when you try this at home. So on a scale of one to five, honestly, this is pretty easy. I'd, I'd call this a one right out the, right out the bat. Um, so please give this a try. This is not difficult at all. Um, and that's beautiful. It's impactful. Really, the only thing that you would have to remember to do to enjoy this is to keep water in it. Um, so there's number one, nice and sturdy. This is going to be number two. And this container and frog were brought to me by a dear friend named Kelly. Kelly, thank you so much, who literally found this in his parents' basement. Um, and he said, gosh, I saw this and thought that you might appreciate it and be able to use it. The really cool thing about using this glass frog inside this glass container is that when you add water to it, the glass frog literally just disappears. You can, of course, still see the hole from this angle, but from the side, you can't tell there's anything in the bottom of the bowl except for water. So let's do another sort of Asian influence design. These little, these are pom-pom mums, which I just love. I think they're super cool. Do I want that or do I want a tulip? Because, you know, this may be a little rigid for that shape of, let's try one. All right, so if we need a little more security with the stem, We'll just take another little piece of stem and stick it right in there beside it. And that holds it in place nice in that little section of the frog. Okay, that's cool. I shouldn't be throwing those on the floor because I'm going to use them, right? Another little section to hold that in place. Let's do another slightly smaller one, or shorter, I mean. I think the thing that I love so much about this is the simplicity of it. Um, and that is the essence of Asian design, Ikebana certainly, um, is the simplicity, the beauty that you focus on just one or two flowers. Just gonna squish that guy in there so it's held a little bit. And then I knew I had another one of these somewhere. All right, now it needs something, probably another flower because I tend to think about this in threes. And this is really not bad. These stems are very straight, but that's not as not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So let's 
make that happen with number three. All right, you see how that's moving? We're gonna fix that. Another little short piece of stem. All right, so it's just pushed right over. It's a little too far forward. I think I wanna move it back just a little bit. Oh, I like that. Now we could even do something interesting, like that's a little, got too much volume to it, but we could literally just kind of add this in. Maybe I should have done that instead of one of the other sticks. Kind of cool. I find that interesting. Um, the thing about the frogs is that you can play with them. Um, I don't have a ton of experience with frogs, but they are a great way to be more environmentally friendly when you're designing flowers. Uh, because we're not using foam, we're using something that is reusable. All of these can be washed, cleaned, and reused again. So that makes them a great option for uh, floral design. All right. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. We're going to taste bourbon now, as is our tradition here at Blossoms and Bourbon. And today I have my friend Mark to thank for this particular bourbon. It's called New Southern Revival Sorghum Whiskey. Um, it's from the High Wire Distillery in Charleston, South Carolina. I read that um, High Wire is the first distillery in downtown Charleston um, since Prohibition. So that's kind of a cool distinction for them. Um, the owners actually have a background in baking. And so they have very much a culinary approach to the way that they do their spirits. This particular spirit is 100% sorghum syrup uh, that's distilled and manufactured into this whiskey product. So saying that it's sorghum makes me think it's sweet. Um, I've never tasted this before, so we'll find out today. My friend Mark brought it to me and said, I thought you might enjoy trying this. So we'll see. Happy sound. All right. Jason. The man behind the magic. He's like in the Wizard of Oz, you know, behind the screen, the guy that was running all the levers and stuff. That's what Jason does here. All right, so good color. It's a very nice color. Obviously, the one thing I forgot to say about this, this is very small batch and everything that this distillery makes that I could find is small batch. Um, they don't do large volumes. In this case, because this is made with sorghum syrup, sorghum is only available for a few months every year. So that obviously limits how much of this they can make. So we'll see. It definitely, wow. It's, it's definitely sweet. It's a little like banana. Wow, that is interesting. Um, it's definitely not your normal whiskey. Uh, for sure, but it's it's very pleasant. It does have some vanilla, some kind of caramelly tones. I definitely get that whole banana thing. Uh, one thing I read online in a review about this was that it might remind you a bit of rum when you taste it or smell it. it does have a bit of a long finish. Um, again, for me, it doesn't finish mid palate like the uh, sweeter wheat bourbons. It doesn't finish back palette like the rise do, but kind of in between. So it's really good. I will share with you one phrase that I read online about somebody who'd written a review of this product. And they said, it's like a proper Southern gentleman who's vacationing in the Caribbean. <laughs> so I just really like that so much. I thought I'd share it with you. Um, anyway, new Southern revival sorghum whiskey. Mark, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm sure that I will be enjoying this. Um, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode. I hope that you'll play with frogs 
in Flower World. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what you try them and uh, how that goes. And by all means, give this uh, whiskey a try. So please remember to like and subscribe our videos if you're enjoying them. Be sure and hit the little bell icon. That way you'll be reminded when a new episode goes live. And until next time, cheers to you and to flowers every day. Thanks for joining us.